Hey guys, it's Davin here at Brubix.com. Behind the camera as usual, we've got James. Say hello, James. So today, I accidentally dented this can of uh, extra light malt extract. Oops. Um, so I thought I'm going to make something with it. So I've taken out another can of Monson's oat malt extract, and I thought with these two, I'd make a nice, good bodied craft beer, East Coast sort of style, lots of fruity tropical aromatics going on. And so I thought I'd show you how to do it. So what am I gonna need? Well, of course I've got my light malt extract or extra light malt extract in this case, got some oat malt extract. So this has actually got uh, malt extract in and oat malt extract, it's a combination of the two. Um, I'm gonna be using the Mangrove Jacks Hophead M66 yeast. And a couple of other things as well. Some pure broom. This kind of helps neutralize the chlorine and the chloramines in water and has also got a good yeast nutrient in. And what they've now found is if you use a, niche, a yeast nutrient whilst making beers with extra fruity tropical hops, it helps bring out massively the hop flavor. So what am I using? So I'm gonna use the Chinook hops here as some bittering. Well, I know I've got a 50 gram pack. Might not use the whole 50 grams. Amarillo, I've got a hundred pack here, and I've also got some Olicana as well. Okay, I'm also gonna need a few other things, a brewing bucket, a hydrometer with my trial jar, um, siphon, um, I'm gonna use a straining bag here. Um, I've got thermometer so I can get all the temperatures right, a spoon for stirring everything, a jug, you'll see what that's gonna come out later, and then something to put it in. I'm probably gonna put some in bottles and some in a barrel. All right, so, now I've got all my bits and bobs, let's get brewing. The first thing I'm going to be using is a straining bag and I'm going to be using this for the hops so we can put the hops in and make them a bit like a, a tea bag so they can fuse and but we can get loads of later beer back. But what I tend to find with straining bags, although they are clean, I don't like to chance it and I think they can be the harbours of infection. So the first thing I like to do is with some cleaner steriliser into a pot Small amount of water, onto the hob, and like Granny used to do with her socks many, many years ago, is put it onto the boil for a couple of minutes, just to make sure there is nothing nasty in there. Right, now, over to me a second, James, because whilst that's boiling up, I'm going to take my two tins of malt extract, because in here is quite thick, quite gloopy, and I'm now going to pour off a bowl of really hot tap water, once I've found my plug, um, and put them in there to soak so that they become less viscous. So the cans are in the sink, quite happily heating up. I'm going to need some boiling water, so I'm going to need about uh, two litres of boiling water to start with, so I'm just going to put the kettle on. The straining bags had a good couple of minutes in the sterilizing solution, so I'm now going to just give it a quick rinse off, and it's very hot. Hot, 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 hot. Give it a quick rinse off, because it's in it. Okay, this is where our jug comes in. So I'm going to open my straining bag and I've sterilised the jug as well. Pop that over the top. And I'm going to grab our, our Chinook hops in this one. Open up the Chinook hops. All 50 grams I'm going to use here. Because I want lots of those. Fantastic aromas. It's also got a good alpha acid as well. So we're going to get a nice amount of bitterness in this beer from these hops. And come on, in you go, all of them in, that's it, down you go. <laughs> He's stuck, there's always one stuck, always one. Sweet, and now I'm gonna take my boiling water and I'm gonna pour my boiling water over it. Now this is kind of like if you do a traditional one, you do a traditional boil, but of course we're not making a traditional beer here, we're making a craft beer. And if you see my no boil kits, you might have seen something very similar to what I'm doing now. So, with it like this now, I'm just gonna lift it up a little bit. Oh, that is really hot. And I'm gonna try and tie a knot in the top with it being really, 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 really hot. Hot, 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 really hot. 
Makes you wonder how these chefs can handle trays straight out of the oven. And then all I'm going to do now, when I get uh, a chance in the next process, uh, whilst we're doing everything else, is just wiggle it around a bit, a bit like you would with a tea bag. Right, so I'm going to put that to one side, and every chance I get, I'm just going to give it a good, good wiggle about, get all those lovely hot flavours and aromas coming out, and get some of those bitterness coming out and into the water as well. The malt extracts have had plenty of time to soften, and their labels are just coming off now. Oh well. There we go, take them off. Get all that gunkiness and just pop it on there. Oh, wow, wow, this water is still very hot. The glue comes off. Almost impossible to get off before you soak them. Right, so let me just do that. And now, I'm going to pop them open. Right, so which one is this? This is the extra light malt extract. Oh, it smells like the center of Maltesers. It's absolutely delicious. And there's one. And then we're going to go for the oat, oat malt extract. So as I say, this has got loads of oats malt mashed into it, as well as loads of barley as well. So you're going to get a lovely, good, thick body. And it smells very, very different. It smells almost, I suppose, a little bit porridgey, as well as being malty at the same time. Okay, so that goes in like that. Now, there's quite a lot of sugar in these kits, so this is why I'm not adding any extra brewing sugar. But there's also still a lot of malt extract in the bottom of these tins. So, in with some of my Boiling water. Ooh, I've lost my spoon then. Of course, it's in my bucket. Huh. And then, just literally, in it goes. Quick stirrer in the bottom. And just gently lift it up so you dissolve all the malt extract. Ooh, the oats as well. Oh, it smells. It smells like a brewery in here. <clears throat> This is going water, this is why it's going hot. Okay. And then, so I don't burn my fingers on the, the cans of boiling water. In goes the oats. It's not quite clean enough, so I'm going to probably do a second go on that at the moment. And let's put that one in as well. Yeah, let's have another go. Whilst I remember a quick swirl around of the, the hoppy tea bag, and then in goes the second one. You can see it really clean inside there, now. Here's the second one. Okay, so down in the bucket now I've got uh, about two litres of water that we've used to swill out our cans, so we just need to mix all of that around. Wow. It's quite gloopy, quite thick, and keep going till it's all into a nice smooth liquid. Lovely, so now that's all mixed in. Back up some here a second, James, because here we've got this lovely hoppy water. The aroma's coming from this now, absolutely fantastic. And all I'm going to do now is just pour this water in as well. So this is going to add all the bitterness into the beers that we would expect um, that we're not currently getting. And I'm going to drop the tea bag in as well. Let's see, look, look that. It's gone yellow. My jug's gone yellow from all the lupulin. And give that a good stir as well. Okay. So now then, we need to top it up because I'm going to make a five gallon brew, a 23, 23 litre brew. So I'm going to top it up to 23 litres, five gallons now, with cold tap water. Now it's up to the 23 litres. We need to give it a really good stir. The colour is great. To get all of that liquid malt extract that's down at the bottom mixed into the water that's all the way through so that we can then take a hydrometer reading 
make sure it's going to come out at the specific gravity I'm kind of hoping for. I've taken a sample in my trial jar and with a hydrometer it's coming out about 1.046. So if that ferments as a beer normally does down to 1.010 we're going to get an ABV of about 4.5%. Now that's fine if I'm going to be doing a real ale but I'm going to be doing a craft beer here so I want it to be about a little bit higher than that, probably about five and a quarter. So I've done the calculations and I need about 300 grams of sugar to bring it up to five and a quarter ABV. But in my cupboard, I've got uh, some spray malt that I've previously used, some light spray malt. And so I thought I would use this and it'll add that extra little bit of body as well and make sure it's really good mouthfeel and nice and um, thick and viscous just as I'd like my craft beer. So gently sprinkle this in whilst giving it a good stirring. Oh, I forgot I had the bag of um, hops going on in there as well. Nice and gently so you don't get massive great clumps. And I know in this bag I've got about 300 grams of spray malt from a previous brew. There we go. We keep stirring till it's all nicely in and dissolved. After adding the 300 grams of spray malt, we're now coming out at 1.050. So that's going to give me about five and a quarter percent. So that's where I want to be. Perfect. So I'm going to also be using this stuff here called Pure Brew. And in Pure Brew, there's a little bag of powder and there's some tablets. Now this Pure Brew helps to neutralize the chlorines and chloramines that are in tap water and that's going to help prevent any off flavors so all i'm going to do here is between two dessert spoons give it a quick crush and here it goes like that and i need to remind myself exactly how much i need here uh, one tablet for a five gallon brew together with one spoonful of the powder and i know that's a teaspoon One spoonful of the powder. And so this is um, also yeast nutrient, as I said to you earlier. So that's gonna help the yeast pull out all the lovely flavors and aromas from the um, hops and help the brew ferment really cleanly. So give that a good stir in. One thing I forgot that I had in my cupboard is something called Hot Boost. And this helps um, the yeast pull out all those lovely flavors uh, from the hops and really increases the um, aromatics that you get from the hops. So inside of the little file like this, and oh, that goes into a glass. It's not very much. And I just need to pop her in here to my tap, get some water. to give it a good wet, get it all dissolved and incorporated. There we go. And that also goes in as well with a really good stir to get it all mixed in. And then the last thing is the hop head yeast. So I'm just literally going to sprinkle that on top. go. On goes the lid. I need one corner of it slightly open. Now this is going to go into my warm place 18 to 22 degrees C now for five days for the initial part of the fermentation to slow down. So uh, then we can add our aroma hops um, and uh, really really flavour this beer up. Right, see you in five days. A pale ale has had four days now in my warm cupboard and so now I'm going to do a bit of a dry hopping and here I'm using Amarillo hops. I've got 100 grams here uh, so I've split it down into 50 grams. We'll use the other 50 grams later and just like last time 
with the straining bag. I've sterilized it in some boiling water with some sterilizing solution. And we're gonna make a tea bag of it as well. Okay. Let's tie a knot in the end. Now we need loads and loads of rooms for these uh, hops to move around. And oh my goodness, okay, you can see what's happened. It's foamed right up and this is all loads of bits of hops as well as um, uh, bits of yeast. So that's all lovely in there. That's done its job for the initial bittering. So now this is gonna come out. I'm gonna give it a good squeeze. Maybe you can see that, James, sorry, a bit wrong angled. Not too much, but a good squeeze can get all that lovely flavours out of that. Let's get rid of that. My top's gonna to go back on now. And now I'm gonna put this back into my warm place, 18 to 22 degrees for another two to three days. Come on in James and have a look at this. Because the hops we added uh, 48 hours ago to dry hop it have added loads and loads and loads of aromas. And now I'm gonna try and get this open Lovely, look at that. Squeeze out some of that lovely juice of the beer. Down here I've got a little bowl, just so I can do the next stages. So, okay, so this, I'll just put the lid back on to stop any bugs getting in. So this is our second lot of hopping, so second lot of dry hopping. This is using Oli Canna, so we'll get lovely flavors of mango, passion fruit, and loads of other lovely and the aromatics coming through. So literally I'm just gonna pop that in there with the others. Get them all in. And then the rest of the Amarillo, so we get lots of lovely orange, peach, grapefruity, citrusy aromas as well. And they're gonna go in. So in total that's a hundred grams of Amarillo and 50 grams of Olicanas in there as well. And I'm gonna wrap this back up. Oh, the aromas are fantastic. And then that goes back in. Give it a, give it a bit of a wiggle, get it down in. Okay, so slightly different though. This is not gonna go back into my warm place because they used to have done all their work. This is now gonna go into a quite a cool place, about 14 degrees C. And I'm gonna leave it in there for four days. And that's gonna allow all those lovely, fantastic aromas from those uh, hops we've just added in to really infuse into the beer and give us a really big, huge citra, florally um, hints and aromas. So, cool place now for four days, about 14 degrees C. My second lot of hops in the double dry hopping went in four days ago and they've been sat in there quite nicely doing their thing and all oh, the aromas are good. Lots of like mango-y, pineapple, citrusy aromas going on in there. So I've taken a sample in my trial jar and with the hydrometer it's coming out at 1.016. So a little bit higher than I was expecting. If you remember I thought it was going to come out at 1.010. So this is where I now go back to my recipe book where I've written all of the bits and bobs down that I've put in here and how I've done the method and I'm going to adjust it. I'll put a little note back to the side of it and say that the, a, the final gravity was coming out at higher than I was expecting. So therefore it's only going to come out at about four and a half percent. So next time I do this, I'm going to up the sugar, um, put a bit of sugar, dextrose in it as well as the spray malt and hopefully then we're going to get to more five and a half percent. But for now, we've got four and a half percent beer, which is good. Right, so down here, I've got a bucket and I've got a siphon. So I need to siphon the beer from the sediment into the second bucket. The first thing I'm going to do, I've sterilized my hands, is I'm going to take out the bag of hops. Now there's lots and lots and lots of beer in here. So I'm just gonna gently from underneath, grab hold of the hops from underneath and give them a nice squidge. And that gets all that extra beer out. But what it's also doing for us is all those lovely hop aromas that are in the um, lupulin are also gonna now drop out and into our beer. So I've got a little pot here, so that's in there. We're done with those. In here, 
Yes, okay, I'm going to be using an auto siphon for once. Uh, right, first things first, being sure the tap's in the off position. Yes, it is. And with the auto siphon, in it goes, and a couple of quick little pumps look. And the beer is flowing. Now it'll take me a couple of moments to siphon this off. So I think, ooh, I might use this trial jar of beer and have a sneaky sample. And as you can see, so I get the most out of this beer, all I do is just tilt the bucket a little bit and I can get as much beer out without disturbing hardly any settlement. I think that is about it. Right, let's get rid of the pipe out of here so I don't need this one anymore. anymore. I've got a long one. We don't need that anymore. So that's off over there. There's quite a lot of sediment left in the bottom. Um, as you can see, there's not much of this uh, sample left. It's a great colour, um, considering all we've used are the can of oat malt extract, the can of light, extra light malt extract, and a little bit of spray malt, and a load of our hops. Lots of man really ripe mango, some perhaps stony fruits coming through as well, but pineapple, yeah. That's really, really great aroma. And body wise, it's got a nice body. Yeah, I think once we've bottled this up, that's going to be quite a nice bit. I've got 125 grams of sugar here that I'm going to use as my priming sugar because I'm going to be bottling some and barreling some. And so I'm just going to pop the sugar into a jug with just enough boiling water. Don't very much at all. Pop it in and give it a stir until it's dissolved now. It should go lovely and clear. If you need to add a little bit more boiling water, then add a little bit more boiling water. So that is pretty much clear. I added a little bit of extra boiling water. Now all I'm going to do now is take the top off and pour this in. It just makes it a little bit easier to get this um, incorporated. Now it's a sugar syrup rather than trying to dissolve the sugar in the beer. So now I can bottle. Here I've got my bottling wand and I can put that either on the end of my siphon or in this case, pops it on the end of the tap. Turn it on. Take a little seat. Already sterilized my bottles. Oh, I'm gonna press up on the bottom of the wand and it starts filling. The good thing about this is you fill the beer from the bottom and it means you don't end up with froth. If you try and do this with a jug, um, you can end up with getting lots and lots and lots of foam at the top. You've got to keep an eye on it though because it will catch you out when it gets to the top. There we go. Right, that's one done. I've got a few more to go. Now if this was a real ale, I'd simply put the caps on and that's it. But this isn't a real ale, this is a craft beer and I want to keep this lush, golden, orangey colour. Now, if I just simply cap the bottles now, that small amount of air that's in there and that small amount of oxygen that's in there could actually turn that whole bottle of beer real ale brown. So what I've got here is I've got um, a little CO2 gas bottle a regulator and then one of these little bits which you normally fit on top of your your kegs a little post push that back up in so a little shot of co2 let me just make sure that's off a second increase decrease a little shot of co2 into the top of each bottle doesn't take much sounds like pain in the pan pipes Now that is going to get rid of any air that's in there. Now we put the caps on and that's going to help keep that lovely, gorgeous colour.
cover. And the rest of it is going into my barrel. And here I've got my siphon again. And on the end of the siphon earlier was a sediment trap. We don't need that anymore, so we can get all the beer out from the bottom. And in it goes, in it goes. Make sure the tap's off. Yes, tap's off. And a couple of quick little pumps. And the flow goes. Finish siphoning the rest of the beer into the barrel. I'm gonna get this nice and tight. Really tight. There we go. And what I'm gonna do now is here I've got a CO2 cartridge. I've got this little holder. And that literally pops in there and we screw it down. And just exactly the same for the beer, so we can expel any oxygen that's going to sit on top of the beer. That's now shot all that cartridge in there. It's under pressure. And that's now going to keep it nice and safe and nice and golden orangey colour. Right, so what are we doing with this now? So I need to make some fancy little labels and then... This needs to go somewhere warm now, about 18 to 22 degrees, whether it's in the barrel or the bottles, so that the secondary fermentation can occur. The beer in the barrel is going to have a slight kind of light little fizz to it, but nothing too much. And I'm hoping to get a good level of fizz in the bottles um, as well. So about 48, 72 hours in my warm place, and then we're going to put it somewhere cool, probably my garage at the moment now is about 15 degrees C for it to bottle condition for about a week or two and then we can pop one in the fridge, pop it open and enjoy a nice pale ale surprisingly with Monton's liquid malt extracts and then a load of hops. It's more about knowing how to do it rather than necessarily doing it from all grain. You can get a very, very good result with the liquid malt extracts, because in this case, Munson's have done all the hard work of um, making the wort and then condensing it down for you. So it's a good alternative. And we do loads of different um, cans of the malt extract. You've got extra light malt, you've got light malt, you've got amber malt, you've got black malt, so if you want to do uh, or dark malt, I think they call it, See if you want to do something like a stout. We've got wheats, um, in, we've got Munich, you've got Vienna, um, you've even got a sour one as well. Lots of different variations of the liquid malt extract, so you can make your own combination of beer in any type of style you want. So, have a look at them. Um, as always, down in the comments below, feel free to ask me any questions. Um, I'll try and get back to you and answer them. Uh, but for now, I'm going to enjoy the rest of this sample. Cheers for now and happy brewing and see you next time. It's actually a really good thing.